not a tip to just your radio. This your boy. This your boy. You're about to enter the Jay Stevens Radio Show. Bring you real radio as we discuss real issues and have real interviews presented radio with a purpose. This your boy. And without further ado, I present to you your boy Jay Stevens. What's up, everybody? You got it locked on the Jay Stevens Radio Show. I am your host, Jay Stevens, and I am so excited about today's interview. I have my main man, financial guru, money expert, Mr. Larice Purnell. How you doing this morning, sir? Man, I'm just so blessed to be on the show today. I'm great, man. I'm great. glad you are great. I'm glad <laughs> yes, you are sir. great on this gloomy Cleveland day. <laughs> oh, God, man. It's going to get better, man. I hope it, so. It's going to get better real soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about what you just said? It's going to get better and it's going to get better real soon. Is that a statement that's embedded in your mind when you're talking to people about finances? Uh, in a lot of cases, I have to say that. Okay. Because before they come see me, they, they think they're dying financially. Financially. So I feel like a lot of t- in a lot of cases, Jay, I feel like I'm resuscitating a lot of people and giving them hope that there is a better or brighter future for them financially if they are willing to do the work. So okay, all right, yeah. because everybody's financial situation is different. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? But I, I will say, over the years, as I've had the opportunity to work with you know a multitude of people. Um, the problems tend not to change because of the income, um, you know, or the tax bracket that they're in. You know, I see the same problems with doctors, with athletes, with CEOs, and I see with people who are just starting out their financial careers or starting to establish their financial future. So, so it's like, you know, I don't let the title, you know, intimidate me or make me think a person's at a certain status. So I treat everybody, you know, the same across the board. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You. I mean, you diving right into it, <laughs> and, and and that's good. That's yeah, good because yeah. see a lot. First of all, before we go any further, please explain to the people what you do. Okay. So yeah, and you know, it, it's it's funny because uh, I get that question a lot, Jay, and, and it surprises me every time because I think that I'm being clear, <laughs> but um, I, I'm the managing partner of CLE Consulting Firm, and our focus is. Um, helping small to mid-sized companies with their accounting services. We do virtual CFO services. We put together compilations of financials to help them get access to capital. Um, And then we do um, tax preparation and planning. So not only do we prepare the taxes, but we give you strategy um, you know, to help, you know, elevate your tax situation and your, you know, to um, help to reduce your liability and just, you know, creative ways, um, legal creative ways um, that will help to just create a strategy for you long term to build wealth. So so that that's what we do, man. And that's what I do every day, all day. Long term to build wealth. Long term. So. The key to building wealth is, you know, we see in our society, especially being in a social media society, we see so many people, they want it right now. I want to be a millionaire tomorrow. If I start the business and it does not succeed in six months, it was a failure. It was a flop. I never should have did it. So long term, is there there levels to long term or periods to long term? Is it five years, 10 years, 50 years, 20 years, 20 years, or is it all of the above? It, it, it's it's really all of the above, but you have to, one, create a strategy and create goals. We always talk about what we want to see ourselves in five years without goals. But everybody says, hey, I want to see myself be wealthy. I want to see myself own my own home. I want to see myself own this big corporation where I have a multitude of employees, but we set no goal or no foundation to get there. And then we wonder why everything we start We never finish. So with the goals, short-term goals, long-term goals, like give me some examples of some goals that a person should set. I mean, is it is it different types of goals for different types of situations? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, But that that is kind of a loaded question, though, because it, it goes back to what I initially said when I say I don't judge you based on your tax bracket, you know, your title. Because even with a millionaire, remember, and I like to use the athletes a lot of time, uh, they're, they're coming out of a situation where they were college students in most cases, and then they sign a contract and they're an instant millionaire. Yes. So just because they're an instant millionaire, should I talk to them like they're a millionaire or should I, or should I be helping them create their foundation? 
So, so in that case, I'm talking about, you know, helping them create short-term goals, making sure they have good credit, making sure they understand their taxes, making sure they understand to save a portion, pay themselves first, not to get in debt, how to use credit. So we always talk about how fixing credit, but we don't talk about how to use credit. So how mm -hmm. to use it to build wealth. Okay. Uh, because most communities, that's what they do. So, so, so those, those are the sort of things that I talk about when we're talking about short term. Long term is everybody wants to retire. In most cases, I can't go in a room where I say, raise your hand, who wants to retire one day? That probably 99% of people say, I want to retire. And that may be at 840, 50, based on your particular you know, goals that you have for your business, for your personal finances. But all that being said is you have to know the number. So yes. I asked the question, you want to retire today. What's your number? What's your number? What's what does it take number? to retire? For you to be comfortable. Absolutely. Because it's so much more to, that's why you see so many people retire because they, they didn't plan to retire. They right. just retired. That's and right. that's the problem with when you have someone that hates their job so much that they can't wait to retire. And what happens is they retire, but since they didn't plan to retire, you see them getting another job. That's right. That's right. Most people aren't 75 working at Walmart because they want to. Right. Because there's activities to get out the house. The library offers right. stuff. The zoo offers stuff. The hospital offers stuff. There's many volunteer opportunities if you're looking to just to kill time. So I, I don't think that you have the aspirations to be 85 pushing cars through the parking lot. <laughs> right. I don't think in most cases, right. I won't say all. Right. Some people are just, they used to work in their entire lives. Mm -hmm. They can't make that transition to just sit at home, enjoy right. their retirement. But in most cases, it's either they, they didn't have, they didn't save them up enough to cover their co-pays, their, their me, uh, medication mm -hmm. and things of that sort. So uh, I, I would just say, I think you, it goes back to that thing when you talk about instant gratification. Yes. It, it, social media is a good thing, but it can be a very bad thing in our community because people live through other people and they live through other people's false realities. Mm. So we see them standing in front of the Bentley, but you know you just saw them catching a the bus yesterday. Right. We, we see them in front of the mansion yes. and, and you get confused like, man, they balling. But you don't realize they still live with their mama. <laughs> or that can be, uh, or or on the flip side of yeah. that, it can be not what you think it is from looking on the outside, That's meaning right. that the person can have the house, yeah. the person can Absolutely. have the Bentley, and are so far in debt yeah. That's right. that you have no idea that they're three months behind on that Bentley That's payment. Right. That's they're right. three months behind on their mortgage. Right. Their credit is 450 right. points. Right. You know, and, and that's good you say. It's because... We, we always listen to a lot of cases when I'm sitting with clients, they're saying, hey, I say, well, how did you get yourself in this situation? Well, my cousin told me about, you know, this car she bought and she got a good deal. But the cousin might not have told you that they put $10,000 down, right. that they're paying double the cost of the car to have that car and enjoy that. So you're right. Some of the people, you know, and I won't knock everybody because some people are doing well and they just want to share their excitement Absolutely. of yeah, success. Yeah. Which is but nothing wrong with There's nothing wrong Especially with that. Especially when you work an 18-hour day. Yeah, that's right. Seven that's right. days a week. That's right. That's right. But it's a balance to everything. And that's where we go back to goals. There's mm -hmm. a bad, you can't, I, and the thing I, I teach my clients is you can't have it all. And people are like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? I can't have it all. You can take the big vacations, live in the big house, drive the fancy cars, travel anytime you want, send your kids to the best colleges, wear the finest clothes, have the finest jewelry, and then say you're ready for retirement. In most cases, we're talking about the average person making a decent living. Mm -hmm. You can't have all that and be prepared to retire. So you have to ask yourself, do I want to live decent today and pick a couple things? I yeah. always tell my clients, pick a couple areas that you value. Like for me personally, I value where I live. Yes. So that's where I put my money, where I live. Because mm -hmm. that's where I spend most of my time when I'm not working, I'm spending it at home. I don't want to put it into the fancy clothes. Like, I right. want to look decent when I walk out the door. Absolutely. But I'm Absolutely. not going to spend every dime I have trying to look and impress. Let's stay right there for yeah. a second. Let's stay right there for a second. Let's jump back to the car first. Then we're going to get into the fashion because we know our people. That's right. That's you right. know, and social media is another thing that, that causes people to do or, or to want to be in a place that they're not. Let's talk about the car. Now, there's a commercial that comes on the radio that I can't stand. I'm not going to say the name of the company, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure you've heard the, com yeah. the commercial on the radio, yeah. especially being a financial person. The commercial, they're trying to be funny where the guy is a bus driver and he has no car. 
And he said, man, I'm about to get in a Range Rover, man. I'm about to get in a Range Rover. You know, and the guy tells him, he said, man, you need a 900 credit score to get a Range Rover. How are you going to get a Range Rover with a 300 credit score? Now, even though they were being funny, it's still the principle of the matter. Now, he said, you don't need a 900 credit score at such and such a dealership. Yeah. It gets under my skin every single time I hear that commercial because there are certain things in life that you have to work for. Right. There are certain things in life that you earn. Right. There are certain things in life that you get when your tax bracket or how much money you make allow you or afford you the opportunity to do it. If you going from no car, just based on the commercial, going from no car, 300 credit score to a Range Rover because this dealership will do it. That is the dumbest thing that a person can do. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. So what, what do you what do you feel about people who? Just jump into stuff just to just to say, I got this. Because that's yes. what people think when they're at the dealership. Wait till they see me in this. Because if people didn't think, wait till they see me in this, we will be driving Priuses. That's right. So it, it, it is an example. I, I just uh, spoke somewhere and I talked about when I walk in McDonald's and I see the young kid. I know he's making eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter. If he worked 40 hours, he's making about 320 to 340 dollars. Um, a week mm -hmm. taxes out he might be bringing home two and a quarter two fifty and then I see him with two hundred and fifty dollar tennis shoes on <laughs> and, and and I say to myself he's working to make somebody else rich yes. and, and when I hear commercials like that I equate it no different to when I fought went down to Columbus and fought against the payday loan uh, providers that we have in our community mm. that are killing our community um, I look at commercials the same way. Those are just a different form of payday lending. Um, because, again, if you're going to get a car at that level, you should have a good credit score. You should have, yes. when you talk about putting the work in, prepare yourself for transactions like that. Because mm -hmm. now what you're doing is you're paying double the cost Absolutely for a car. Are. And that's the story I tell you that when we talk about when my cousin was driving it, she told me I, got, I could get this or you can get it, but she didn't tell you the backdrop yeah. that because of her bad credit score, instead of paying $600, she paying nine yeah. or 1000 With a 21% credit, with, uh, I mean, absolutely. Uh, interest rate. In interest rate. So, so with that being said is, um, those are those are the challenges, and, and I fight against stuff like that. Your auto title loans, where now our people pay for a car, finally get the 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 title to the car, then they go lend against the car. So now you pay double. But when you have bad credit, you already paid double the first time because yes. you have bad credit. You have bad credit. So now you're paying triple when you go to get this loan against that title. So that's the stuff we don't think about. Mm -hmm. We pay three or four times the cost of that initial car. So then we, we were worried when 20 years into our career, we have no retirement. But you just you pay three times for a car. If you'd have paid one time for it with good credit, that mm -hmm. other two times you paid for it could have been in your retirement. Right. Anywhere 10, 15, depending on the, the level of that vehicle. So, so those are the dynamics that I deal with. And I do. When I listen to radio commercials like that, I do look, listen to them differently with a mm -hmm. different ear, with a different mindset, and, and it frustrates me. Yes, But absolutely. all I can do is, day to day, as I talk to the clients who come through our doors, is educate people. Educate them. I tell them, I don't want to just do your taxes for you. You can go to any place, and I can name all the places you see on TV mm -hmm. that you can go to, and they'll prepare your taxes for you, and that's it. My job is to educate you on the value of the income you make. The value of your value, because you're the one that's valuable to that company, therefore creating that income. Mm -hmm. So do you value the money that you make? So education on money is very important. Oh, my goodness. Having money yeah. does not make you an educated person. Like you said, because we're just using athletes, not saying the athletes Absolutely. are dumb. Absolutely. We're just using them because it's, it's a qu quick go-to. That's right. And they that's make right. a lot of money Absolutely. quickly. Absolutely. So you have someone that had just went from college with nothing to multi-millions of dollars or from their rookie year to multi-millions of dollars. That's right. Getting multi-millions of dollars does not make you educated on money. It just takes you from someone who had nothing to someone who has a lot of something That's right. to buy things with, but you're not educated. So, so it's, a, it's a mindset. And we can, we can go away from athletes and talk about people who hit the lottery. It's the same thing. I was thinking. Okay, so you hit the lottery. Today, you're worried about how you're going to pay your light bill. Tomorrow, you're worth $180 million. Mm -hmm. So if you still have that mentality of, of, of I'm in survival mode, I don't understand credit. I don't understand investment. I don't know mutual funds. I don't know the different IRAs. I don't know how to invest in different overseas funds. 
those are the things you becoming that now worth 180 million doesn't change it because still somebody you still need someone to educate you on what to do with that money so the money once you get money getting educated why is getting educated on it important because you will blow it if you don't if you don't um and it's a mindset thing it, it it's a mindset and education will will allow you again to value where you are value your finances make good decisions it'll allow you to know well okay my company offers a 401k plan and they match five percent but i've never i've been there 10 years and never invested in it so I've left free money on the table. <laughs> so <laughs> It's funny you yeah. said that because I have to tell on myself, when I had a job, that was me. Okay. Before I well, you know, really start doing what I do uh, on my own, I was with a job that offered a great 401k plan. But because I was not educated, I just thought about, you know, people who have jobs, you hear about 401k, you Absolutely. know about 401k, but I never dove into it. And when I finally got into it, uh, a couple years before I quit and drew my money down, I was like, wow, I could have had this instead of that. But it was because of lack of education, of that's understanding right. money. That's right. that's but right. that's where you come in to say, right. we can stop all this. I want to educate you on money. I want to show you the value of money. I want to show you the importance of money. I want to show you how to invest your money because every investment deal is not a bad, every investment deal is not a good deal. That's right. That's Do you right. talk to people about saying, hey, that's a bad one, but I have another option that's, that's a right. good one? That's right. Um, you want to you give people, I call that steering. I don't steer anybody to one product. I give them options. The great thing, you know, for us and I love about our company, we don't sell products. Yes. So I can speak real to you, honest. I can review contracts with you and tell you and say, hey, you may want to consider this. This is a tip. It's not advice. It's a tip I'm giving you. Um, so I, I, I would say, you know, in that aspect, you're, you're right. But I would even go back to this and say this further. We Google everything. We spend our time. How much time do you spend going through your timeline of social media, but you won't Google about your money? You won't Google about your IRA. You won't Google about your company's 401k plan. So I, I, that's, that's a challenge I have for everybody listening. I really want you to equate that. How much time do you spend flipping from Facebook to Snapchat to Instagram to Twitter to LinkedIn to, to keep up on who's following you? The same time you're spending on that, I would challenge you to put that into researching Google. You Google everything you want to go to the movies. You want to know the movie time, to go to a concert, to go see Jay Stevens, to go do everything. <coughs> yeah. Did you hear that? <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> so you, you definitely, I mean, we, we spend time Googling that. So you want to make sure that you put that same amount of effort. Don't let nobody know more about your money than you do. When you sit at the table, educate yourself. Of course, they're the experts at it, but at least understand the verbiage they're using when they're sitting there talking to you. So, or even if they, you sit at the table and they bring up a concept that you don't understand, don't sign the document. Mm -hmm. You ain't losing one day ain't gonna change your life. Right. So right. go home and research what they said and, and get a second opinion like you do in the medical world as well. Okay. So, so you okay? I want to ask you a question because you said understand your money. We hear so many situations, and maybe because I'm not there, okay. I don't know. So I want to ask this for the listeners. Um, Educating yourself on money. You hear people who are multimillionaires who say, you know, my accountant or this person had been stealing money from yes. me for years right. and I never knew. Is that because of lack of understanding money or is that just not paying attention to what your team is doing? So it, it's not paying attention to your team. It's no different than having a 401k plan and being invested in it and you get the statement every quarter, but you never open it. So you got years of statements unopened. And then five years from now, you go to draw it down and you shouldn't be surprised on what the value is because you should have paid attention along the way. It's nobody's fault that it didn't have the gains you wanted or it had the losses it took. Mm -hmm. If you educated yourself and you paid attention to your money, you will be in a better situation. Okay. So I would say what that is, always understanding what you have your team doing for you and being clear on the roles, but also that having a team that will be willing to educate you. Because all accountants don't want to educate you. So is that a red flag? That's that's is that a red flag? Absolutely. I'm talking to you about my money as my accountant, uh, or my banker, or my investor, or whatever, and you don't want to answer certain questions that I have. And the you know I, I ask you a question about this particular thing that I kind of you know stumbled across the education Leave. on, and, and you say, hey, 
Leave. Ah, don't worry about that. We got that. Jay, leave. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. Leave. Leave. Your job, my job is to meet with my clients at least, most of them are monthly, quarterly. Mm -hmm. And in that quarterly meeting, I dig into the financials of their business, of their personal financial situations. I dig into it. I challenge them. Like, they don't kind of know I know about their money. I know about their money. I, in most cases, I can tell them more about their money than they can tell themselves. Right. But I don't, get, I don't get a kick out of that. I challenge them. It's no way I should be asking you questions about your money that you don't understand. Okay. So, so absolutely, you want somebody who's willing to educate you and to elevate your mind. I want my clients to leave, and anybody should want their clients to leave better than when they came. Yes. That's how you know that they brought real value to your life. If you don't miss them when they leave, they added no value. And that, that makes you look good as the financial advisor Absolutely. because if they say, hey, man, I, I see the last three years your financial life has completely changed. How? Then they say, well, you know, Larice Purnell, that's, that's right. <laughs> it's, I, the best, I had, it's the best blessings of my life ever. I have a client, been a client for a year now, just celebrated a year with them. We had to go because he's getting ready to purchase a building. We're sitting in front of the bank. This banker has been dealing with him for five years before he met me. He, we were sitting at the table just a few days ago, and the banker started talking language. He's keeping up with him now. A year ago, you could tell he was a novice to his own money. This year, he goes in there with his, with his you know, legs crossed, you know, talking and speaking the language and understanding interest uh, expense, understanding his balance sheet, understanding what assets right. mean, the value of assets, understanding equity, owner's equity, and the conversation has elevated. So at the end of the day, who's the common denominator in that room? Right. And the banker's very clear right, on that. Right, right, So that shows to that banker, like, hey, I need to send some other clients your way. Yes. So, so now you're beginning to network that's right. off of one person. That's right. Now, you, <laughs> that is so amazing. You know, being a person who is financially stable is a blessing. Yes. But to be educated. It's even more. It's even greater because now when you walk in the room, you walk in the room not as a dummy with money, but you're walking in the room with money and knowledge on how to invest. I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. so you're not going to just throw terms out that I don't know about. And if I feel that you are trying to do that, that's another red flag that we can't do business because you're trying to do something that that's we're right. not supposed to, that's that you're not supposed to. But I want to ask you another question because time, he's a busy man, and so we are, <laughs> we are running out of time. But I want you to talk about going into business with others because here in Cleveland, you have definitely changed the game uh, you and some other people when it comes to black owned businesses and a lot of people aren't familiar with the uh black friday so yeah. can you please elaborate on that and what made you create that a couple years back in a quick synopsis of it traveling to another city speaking on finances have been speaking all over the country on finances and i noticed that everybody that was getting in my line was entrepreneurs and something hit me that if people who have bad personal finances well then therefore have bad business finances and then it then i started as i started to research more and realize that black, most uh, black owned businesses close within their first year and, and i realized quickly the problem was it was a lack of financial literacy mm -hmm. in their households so they were carrying personal problems to the business so they couldn't su survive okay. they couldn't compete so i woke up never forget it on a monday traveled on that Sunday, jumped up, and the God dropped the idea in my spirit. When I say it was very clear, it, it was a God-given idea. And, and I called, you know, uh, my wife at the time, and I said, hey, I got an idea. If I'm crazy, I'm going back to sleep. And she said, no, you're not crazy. I, yeah. That is dynamic. I started it first, first year. A couple thousand people came out, and, and, and I think it was God showing me yeah. It's a good to, idea. It's You're a good idea. Right We're going the right way. Mm -hmm. Then it just continued to expand. Then I start to see people network that wouldn't usually network. I started to connect with people I never knew. I started to walk in businesses and people would just say, hey, come behind my counter and sit next to the safe. They never met me a day in their life. Right. Then I knew it was a God assignment yeah. because I had access in places that people usually wouldn't have access in. I was having conversations about people's money mm -hmm. at a very intimate level with no relationship. Do you feel that that Black Friday idea was uh, uh, the community saying, man, we've been waiting on somebody like you? 
A- absolutely. It was, I-, I learned that the issues of our community became more and more evident that there was trust issues. There was lack of, I would say not leadership, because we have some great leaders in our community, but there was, a, it was just a missing void of somebody that was going to be a bridge to bringing us together okay. it, within this direct community. Mm-hmm. So we have, again, great leaders doing great things in this community, but it was, it was, it was almost like an organization that needed to be built that would draw that. And, and I'll say, you know, just watching over the years morph into what it's morphed into. Something big. Oh, my gosh. People are talking about it all around the nation. I've been to D.C. I've been to Columbus. I've been to L.A. I've been to Dallas. I've been to Miami. Mm-hmm. People all around the nation want to know, how can you connect people in a dying economy? One of the rated one of the poorest cities in the nation. Mm-hmm. Now you're talking about developing wealth in our communities. Right. It made a lot of people stand up. So, That's it. so yeah, man, it's, it's a blessing, man. That's and, it. That's and, it. And, and and I, what I always try to do, we're not perfect people, mm-hmm. but we, I try to make the best asserted effort to do it myself and to lead by example. Yep. So when I challenge people to work together, I then have to work with other people. Mm-hmm. CLE is owned by another African American sister that is a powerful financial figure in this community. So, so that's a partnership. Yes. The black box fix. Uh, is owned by myself and my partner, Eric Rogers, a powerful businessman. Uh, uh, a shout out to Black Box Fix. <laughs> we got to give a shout out to Black Box Fix, <laughs> yeah. uh, people that's listening outside of Cleveland. If you come and visit Cleveland, Man. you definitely want to go to Black Box Fix and you will see why it's one of the pillars in the community when it comes to some good, good. You will go to Black Box Fix and we'll have a turkey burger with a uh, sauteed shrimp with just one onion ring on the top. <laughs> Man, uh, we appreciate that. And then, and then we got a new partnership, Jay. Um, that I'm really, really excited about because I, I feel like it's like you bringing three different, you know, groups of people together. Mm-hmm. We're getting ready to do something uh, opening very soon in the next few weeks. Uh, Rock 21, right Rock here 21. On, on Rockwell and 21st Street near downtown Cleveland. Myself, Eric Rogers. Uh, my, that's my brother, my friend, my business partner, and then we got Coach Ted Ginn. Who's a pillar, pillar in this community? Pillar, much respect, not yes. just locally but nationally. So this brother, very powerful businessman as well, um, coming to the table. Um, we're all working together, and I think you guys are going to see some dynamic, you know, quality service, quality food, great location, an area that's really developing. Um, so you're going to see something very powerful. But again, Wonderful. just showing how we got to work together yes. to create wealth. The issue is we don't have wealth. I just walked in Saks Fifth Avenue just a week ago, and I saw in the tennis shoe aisle of Gucci, Louis Vuittons, all those. It was all of us standing in there. Yeah. So we don't. The money is not the issue. Right. How, it's not the it's issue. How to spend it's it. how to spend it and how, how we it. use it to maximize how we elevate our communities, how we become owners of homes, how we become owners of our business. And I don't mean the title of your business, the logo of your business. I'm talking about the building of your business, Mm. the investments of your business, the assets of your business, really owning your business. So that's power. So that... That's, that's where wow. I'm at, man. So. I like that. I like that. And we're, we time is up. You just said owning the business, the logo, and the building. And when you said that, it made me think of the movie The Founder. The real estate guy, you ever seen the movie yeah. The Founder? The guy told him, he said, man, you got to look past owning McDonald's. He said, you don't own McDonald's. Right. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. That's right. That's so he said, you got to start owning the land. Right. That the buildings are on changed his whole life. That's right. And that is a great way because one thing about buildings, property, land, it never loses its value. You can buy land and give it to your great, great, great grandkids. Right. You can buy a, a you can buy ten acres in the area that probably nothing happens. And you just own that ten acres. You done bought the ten acres for twenty thousand dollars. And then ten years from now, some development want to build on your joint. They like, hey, we'll give you a million five. That's right. You paid twenty thousand dollars for ten acres that you are now about to get a million five. That's a long term investment that so, we was so, talking about earlier in the conversation. And I know we wrap it up to give it an example. Right here in the city of Cleveland, right where if you guys remember Random Mall, the Random Mall, the largest mall in the world when it first opened. Shout out to Random Mall. <laughs> you guys know. <laughs> 
<laughs> that mayor um, of North Randall sat on that land, um, you know, which was acres. Now look who's coming to that land. Yep. Everybody around who st stood, they were consistent even when the mall had died. Think about how that value of those lands have appreciated now. Because mm -hmm. now Amazon, one of the biggest com companies in the world, world. going to provide 2,000 jobs. Yep. Going, guess what? Now housing has to go there. Mm -hmm. Businesses have to accommodate those people for lunchtime, mm -hmm. to work out, to do everything, to wash their cars, to get gasoline. So think about who owned that land and sat on it in a for time all those years. when it was it was it was dying. Because Randall Mall yeah. probably been closed over ten years. For sure, that's for sure. So so just think about the value in that. So ownership is the new key word in your community. Ask yourself, what do I own? And then and it, it should make your spending habits change just with that word. If you don't own your own home, if you don't own your own car, if you don't have your investments, if you don't own the building your business is in, you have some work to do, everybody. So your legacy matters. The key word is ownership and creating a legacy for yourself. Not a Land Rover, not just life insurance, but a legacy that your family, your kids, kids, kids can take care and live off of. So the Bible says uh, a, a man, a good man leaves, leaves a inheritance, inheritance for his children's, children's children. children. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, you have got it locked on Jay Stevens Radio Show. Our guest today was financial advisor. And now you see why I called him a money guru at the beginning of the uh, show, Larice Purnell. Can you please give them the title of your latest book, please, sir, and where they can get it? Financial Foundations. You can go on Amazon. Go to LariesePurnell.com. Hey, it's there waiting on you. It's even in the public libraries. If you're in the city, if you stop in the city, hey, if you want it in your city, I'll put it in those libraries as well. But hey, follow me, man. You can follow me at Larice Purnell on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snap. I'm everywhere. Spell Larice Purnell for me. It's L-A-R-E-S-E-P-U-R-N-E-L-L. -L. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Larice Purnell, follow him on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and be sure to pick up his book. What's the name Financial of it again? Financial Foundations. Financial Foundations. I have read it. It has changed my life. Believe that. We thank you for keeping it locked on Jay Stevens Radio Show. Be sure to follow your boy, Jay Stevens Radio Show, on Instagram and on Facebook, and be sure to follow Jay Stevens Radio Show on YouTube. Until next time, it's your boy. We out of here. Deuces. <laughs>